Hey guys, Dan Ward here from Ochoco Bushcraft. Well today guys, I'm starting a new series. It is going to be titled Bushcraft Basics. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach some uh, basic bushcraft skills and uh, just basically one subject on um, each video. They will be directed towards those who are new to bushcraft, just getting into it. But at the same time, hopefully there will also be things in there that those who of you who've been doing bushcraft for a while will also find useful and uh, perhaps even learn some new skills along the way. So today's video is about the ferro rod. Uh, the ferro rod is an absolute essential piece of gear that anyone who wants to do bushcraft should have with them. In front of me here, I have a wide variety of ferro rods. Uh, if you go on to say amazon.com for example and you type in ferro rod, uh, these and a lot of other styles and sizes are going to come up. Um, some would be like this in a plastic case called the uh, Strike Force. There's little tiny models that can be hung on a keychain that come with a small magnesium rod attached. There's quite a few um, different companies that are making this style here. And, you know, like I said, various, various styles. And all the way up to the bigger rods like these here. I've got a couple laid out that are uh, half inch in diameter, six inches long. So I've used all of these. I've used quite a few others. Uh, when you're looking for a ferro rod, you want to get one that's big. Um, you know, the bigger it is, like these half inch diameter ones, the more sparks you're going to get. And when you get more sparks, that means your odds of getting fire increase. Also, you are less likely to break it. Some of these smaller rods, I have seen people applying pressure and these things break. And you do not want to be in a situation where you need to get fire and have your ferro rod break. So for the fact that it, um, it's not going to break, it's going to give you more sparks, and it's going to last a lot longer, I uh, recommend a bigger ferro rod. That being said, not all ferro rods are created equal. Some are a harder metal. Um, Strike Force here is a good example. I will get sparks off it, but they're just like a quick flash of sparks and then they're gone. Uh, other ferro rods are softer and you'll not only get the sparks, but you'll like actually get pieces of hot molten metal that will come off of the end of the ferro rod and for like the next second they'll actually you know sit there and burn in your tinder bundle those are a lot better for getting fire going uh, when you need it on the um, other end of it you can get some that are so soft that uh, you're using up the rod in no time just basically wearing your rod out so let me get these out of the way guys and then I will share with you my personal recommendation uh, since I've had the opportunity to use a lot of different brands and styles and sizes of ferro rods. Um, the one that I personally use now, uh, for a long time I was using the um, Strike Force, but as I said, I you know, after a while the rod was too short, I was getting sparks, but I wasn't getting any of those hot molten pieces of metal that really get things going. So I started um, experimenting with a few other rods and uh, I found this. Um, Uber Lieben is the brand if you want to look for it on Amazon or in a local sporting goods store. It's five inches long, half inches diameter, comes with a real nice striker that actually has a lip on the bottom on one side so it really gets the sparks going and also this little striker has uh, on the end of it has like some rough edges that you can use to scrape fine shavings off of a piece of uh, 
fat wood or something to get you a little pile of shavings. But anyway, guys, so you go out, you purchase your ferro rod. When you get your new ferro rod, it's going to be covered in like a black coating like this. Before you can get your sparks, you're going to have to scrape off some of that black coating. So scrape off some of that black coating here, get it down to bare metal. Okay, I got me a nice bare spot here. And that will produce my sparks. And as I said on this one, what's real nice is not only will I get sparks, but I'll also get some pieces of hot molten uh, metal that will actually land on my tinder and help to ignite it. Okay, there's a couple different ways to use a ferro rod. And you'll actually hear some people arguing back and forth about what is the best way. Uh, a lot of people will teach you to uh, when you're going to ignite something to pull your rod back away from it like so others uh, will tell you you know to go ahead and just maybe use your rod to hold it in place and give a strike down and then if you hold it over and go down like this you have a tendency to um, actually knock your tinder away maybe you've got a fine pile of shavings here and going down into it like that you could brush them all away and have to start all over so that's that is a technique I would not recommend of of just going down you know hard and fast like that um, pulling away is better I believe well hitting my black here there we go pulling away is better I believe but there's another technique which I really like and if I'm working with um, tinder that's maybe not quite so easy to start, uh, it's a little damp outside, it's cold. What I like to do is hold my tinder down with the end of this, use quite a bit of force on the striker, and then give a whole bunch of movements. So I'm getting spark after spark after spark in there. So you can see when I do that, it's kind of a slow, heavy movement, and I do it over. I will get all kinds of sparks, and then those hot pieces of molten metal are sitting there and burning even after the um, sparks hit. So that's that's my preferred method. It's, it's slower, you're pushing harder, so you're not brushing things away, but you're getting hot molten pieces of metal that continue burning along with the sparks and uh, this rod is a perfect rod this uber leaven for giving you that combination of sparks and hot molten metal okay so you've got your ferro rod um, you've practiced you know the technique you've discovered hey I can make sparks with this um, as I said try this one try the putting down pressure slow hard it takes a little more practice but you'll get a lot more sparks you'll get the hot molten metal and you need something to be practicing with now what I advise when you first start using a ferro rod don't rush out to the woods and start grabbing different barks and and different grasses and things right away here's the reason when you're new to, to the ferro rod if you grab some unknown sources of tinder and you're not able to get fire you're going to question, is it your technique? Are you not getting the, the sparks you need? Or is it the tinder? You're going to be a little unsure. It's better while you are learning your technique to practice with a material that is very combustible and should ignite. That way, if for some reason it doesn't, you can say, okay, I'm not getting sparks. I'm doing something wrong because this stuff is supposed to burn. So probably... Uh, one of the best sources you can get that costs absolutely nothing is leftover dryer lint. I save all of the lint out of my dryer, put it in a bucket out in the garage, and you know, sometimes I'll throw a handful of this in my pack when I'm going out on a rainy or snowy day and use it to get my fire going. But it is a great 
free um, source of tinder to practice with. So let's go ahead and take me a little bundle of dryer lint and I'm going to fluff it up a little bit. I'm not going to just leave it all compacted. You want to always fluff your material re regardless of what it is unless of course you know it's um, wood shavings that you can't fluff but if it's you know fine bark you can rub it together in your hands fluff it up same with grasses the dryer lint cotton balls turn them inside out fluff them up that way you've got a lot more tiny little fibers sitting there to catch sparks with and just make yourself a little bundle and use your ferro rod right here on top and like I said I use the slower heavier method and there you go and uh, you know try different methods see what you like but uh, dryer lint like I said is a, a free highly flammable source it'll help you get your technique down help you uh, Get the practice in you need so that you have the skill and the confidence to do this if uh, you're in a real survival situation and you desperately need to get fire going so brush that off here okay next thing you can also find jute twine um, Sometimes at arts and craft stores, you can buy it, this on the internet. It's another source that you can practice with. However, unlike dryer lint, you are going to pay for it. But it's also, you know, it's a lot of fun. You can use this for um, solar fires. You can use it for flint and steel fires. You can use it for quite a different, um, quite a few different ways of starting fire. So you just cut yourself a short piece to start with. You'll actually end up cutting several short pieces if you're going to make a nice little tinder bundle. But you want to uh, take them apart and you unravel it by turning it in the opposite direction. So see there it's coming untwisted in the middle. The middle is opening up as in, and then you grab those fibers and just start taking it apart. And getting down to you know little little fine hairs like that and it takes some time but jute twine is a lot of fun to work with uh, when I first got into bushcraft I was giving given assignments to make um, birds nest size bundles of jute twine and then uh, on a January day, I had to ignite one bundle with a ferro rod. I had to ignite another bundle using a flint and steel and char cloth. And I had to uh, do a third bundle um, using a uh, not the little square lenses, what they call Resnick lenses. I had to use one of those and in January that was quite tough but fortunately you know it was a sunny day it was cold but I got my uh, flame so anyway guys you'll just keep keep um, unraveling and I'm not gonna make a big one here if you're practicing at home you know you probably want to make a little bit bigger bundle something the size of a uh, softball baseball grapefruit any of those works great for fire starting but I'm just gonna make a little pile here to show you that this stuff is highly flammable and works great as a source to practice on and as I said I carry some in my backpack just because it's fun to have and sometimes when I'm out I'll use it to get my fires going there you go this is highly highly flammable it's actually catches the sparks even easier than the dryer lint. Dryer lint being free, this not, but I'd recommend getting some anyway because you want to try your skills out on different sources of tinder um, to see how the different tinders are going to react. So as you're practicing and learning your skills, um, work with stuff like jute twine, cotton, 
batting, um, dryer lint. And when your skills get down uh, good, then graduate and start working with, you know, try out different grasses, juniper bark, sagebrush bark, you know, rub your hands together, get a bunch of little fine shavings. Um, see if you can find some fat wood with pitch in it. Use a knife and make like a little tiny pile of, of shavings and ignite those with your sparks. Just you really need to get a knowledge of all the materials uh, in your environment that are available available to you that will catch a flame. Uh, just for to show here, I grabbed a mixture of dry grasses, sagebrush bark, and juniper bark. And I just kind of mixed it all up together in a little handful. So it's dry, pretty dry out here right now. And all of these sources are dry. I just, to show you again, working with natural materials as your skills advance. And this is what you want to get to where you're not dependent on uh, man-made tinders any longer, but you can now go to the forest and use what it provides. And this is not igniting quite as easy. I'm having to work out a little bit, so I'm going to uh, make my bundle here a little bit better. There we go. And that's something you'll discover as you begin to work with man-made materials. Um, you're going to find that some ignite easier than others, some you have to work at, and some are not going to work at all. Uh, it is early morning. There was dew on the ground, so the grass may have picked up a little bit of dampness because I have ignited this before a lot easier, but I do have my fire. And uh, as I said, I've got juniper bark, sagebrush bark, um, and some dry grasses all mixed together here. And if I needed that to get a fire going, I would have, you know, some little tiny twigs to start working onto the fire and blow it as, blow it like so, get the flames burning up through the materials and get myself a nice fire going. Okay. Okay guys, one last thing I want to show you. Uh, it's good to be prepared for the unexpected. So I always carry a small Ziploc bag of cotton balls saturated with Vaseline. For those of you who are unfamiliar with this, basically you just go down to like your local dollar store, or, you know, wherever you can get these the cheap on the cheap side. Buy yourself a uh, bag of cotton balls and a jar of petroleum jelly. There's You can use your finger and just start rubbing it in. Uh, I use a little plastic knife. Get yourself some of the petroleum jelly and just start rubbing it into the cotton ball. Get it rubbed in. I usually leave like one little corner dry, but you actually you don't need to do that either. But you'll rub this around, work it in. You can put them in, you know, an Altoids tin, a waterproof match container. I just happen to carry them in a Ziploc baggie because that's what I've always done, no particular reason. Make up, you know, six or eight of these and carry them with you when you're out. And then that way, if an emergency situation comes up and you're out in a bad, bad rainstorm, everything's wet, you can't find dry tinders and stuff, you can get some wood and uh, get
get one of these little cotton balls out and it will catch sparks and it will burn uh, for seven or eight minutes you can get you know even damp little pieces of damp kindling on there to start burning and stuff um, using these so I just made this one up but I'm gonna go ahead and get one out of my bag to show you um, so these have been in my bag since last winter so they've been sitting in here for quite a long period of time and they store quite well now what I will do is I will turn it in kind of turn it inside out pull up some dry fibers like so that way you've got more material to catch your sparks with I'll put my ferro ride right on top of it to hold it in place and there you go um, that's going to burn for several minutes and you know in an emergency situation I would have little twigs here and start put, piling them on top of that I would try to find as dry as I could maybe take some bigger twigs shave off the wet outside and get some little fine uh, dry pieces and use those but you know as I said this is it's just common sense to carry something with you you know for those emergency situations you never know you could be out hiking a horrible rainstorm comes in a blizzard sets in you can't find dry tinders uh, and you need to get a fire you're getting cold it's a long ways back to your vehicle maybe you're staying the night things aren't going as planned like I said six or eight of these they can be lifesavers they it doesn't matter if they're wet it can be pouring down rain right on top of that cotton ball and it's still gonna light and it's gonna burn and it could end up saving your life so guys Dan Ward at Ochico Bushcraft um, that is uh, first video on bushcraft basics on the ferro rod hope that you find what I've taught to be useful and you're able to get out there and use it and um, learn new skills and advance your skills. Hope to make more segments just like this in the near future. Guys, take care.